yesterday we discussed packet flow and as today we don't have any doubts so I'm thinking we are very much clear okay so let's start with packet filtering so um, you have type of interface where you can assign IP address and we all know that there are two types of IP assignment that is IPv4 and IPv6 okay so let's talk about IPv4 first so the firmware will discard the packet IPv4 for one of the following reason okay so yesterday we were checking uh, why your interface your ingress interface will discard the packet right so uh, these all limitations or these all fields we have in our IPv4 packet okay which are captured or which are inspected by our Palo Alto firewall okay so let's discuss one by one so first is mismatch of ethernet type and IP version suppose you are using UTP cable that is ethernet cable and um, user type that is coming it is showing uh, fiber optic fiber or some token ring or some any other so if it will be matching in that case it will be difficult then it is IP version like IPv4 is supported or configured and it is receiving some packet IPv6 where your interface is not configured to listen to IPv6 in that case it will check and discard it the second is truncated IP header truncated means it is overridden or overwrite okay so sometimes what we have is we have IPv4 header which is generated by the traffic okay but sometimes it's uh, it's manipulated okay as, as we know nowadays uh, we came across several hacks several attacks okay but few applications like um, you are accessing some file and you are not able to reach that server right so the, most of the chances that you are not able to reach that file is that that server is not able to find the correct header of your request so most of the time your browser is using by default cookies or something like these that are uh, pre-saved in your browser so your browser will take that cookies or that cache file it will start looking for that file again on the server and the server might not able to reply you because it is not able to uh, you know complete session is not um, again established or there is some uh, uh, there is some lag lack of information that is required by the server to entertain your request okay so in that case it we can say it is truncated IP header okay then next is IP protocol number zero so we know IP protocol number zero does not exist okay it is not used but still if it is uh, it is there okay in case we say uh, we use ICMP it is it varies from zero to nine right where we use ICMP uh, protocol number one to uh, eight one for uh, sending uh, query and eight is for reply right echo request and egg and echo re reply okay then next is uh, ttl zero when you have time to live like when you are thinking you are getting one ttl value in the last that ttl is nothing but it is the time for which that ARP will be there or entry of that server will, uh, will be there in your machine for that much time interval and that TTL value is usually in seconds okay like you are getting TTL 64 that means 64 seconds it will retain that value afterwards it will push it if it is not getting any reply or it's not getting any communication within that 64 seconds then it again has to make that connection right so next is a land attack okay so um, th this is a type of attack which is uh, you know uh, which can be generated by your land segment right so when it's when you say you have employees you cannot trust them yesterday we were talking about it right so in that case also uh, it's it, it also checks that land attack as it all about like say scripting and coding so we'll not go into in detail okay okay 
So uh, when we will be configuring our firewall, we'll see all these options available there, and we just need to uh, check check according to our requirement, right? At that time, we will discuss this in detail. Okay. So next is ping of death. That is, uh, you know, you are um, pinging a machine till it get all the resources equipped for that ping reply. Next is a uh, Martian of address. Okay. It's again like say you are, uh, you are playing with the addresses. Like we, yesterday, we decrypted the packet uh, IP, uh, sorry, that um, IPsec and VPN traffic, right? That traffic was encapsulating some other IP address. Likewise, if there is any request which is coming from any source, and, and that source again contain an, another IP address hidden into that, okay? That sort of thing are uh, covered into this. Then we have uh, IP checksum errors. So when we say IP checksum errors, it's like uh, um, there is checksum value in in every header in in, in the last bit, in the last uh, you know uh, when the packet is encapsulated or that segment is encapsulated and forms a packet. Okay, the last field contains the checksum value. If we are if we know IPv before header, right? Okay, so that checksum value is, is, you know, is verified every time. Okay, if that value varies in that case also, it discards that packet. So all these things are for IPv4. Okay, and this is for IPv6. So IPv6, we all know it all about like uh, very few fields are there, like source IP address, destination IP address. And this IPv6 is uh, does not require any net translation as well. Okay, as we have um, we have numerous amount of IP addresses, so netting is not required for this. But sure, we use uh, IPv4 to IPv6 con conversion when we talk about say uh, you are migrating your data center and you are migrating to new. Uh, new DC and you want to compete with uh, you know today's uh, requirement so in that case IPv4 addresses are not available every time okay so in that case you use a feature called dual stack okay in which you convert your IPv4 to IPv6 and IPv6 to IPv4 because few servers who are previously working or applications which are uh, running from very long time okay so they are not compatible with IPv6, okay? So in that case, it also uses um, a dual stack, right? So uh, its fields are very are also very limited. If you go through the IPv6 header, okay, there are very few fields. I think four or five fields are there, right? As comparison to uh, IPv4, where we have numerous amount of fields, okay? Different, different flags, different, different fields, okay? they are not uh, in ipv6 so limitations are also you know reasons of this card are also very limited in ipv6 first one is same mismatch of ethernet type and ip version then we have truncated truncated ipv6 header then we have truncated ip packet ip payload buffer length less than the ip payload field okay then we have jumbogram extension i think jumbo we are very much familiar okay then we have truncated extension header okay so uh, we have queried like what is the meaning of jumbo uh, we have jumbo frame technology or we have jumbo frame feature in our devices okay in which we allow or discard jumbo frames jumbo frames means uh, the size of that packet or of that or that frame is not equal to your specified size it is always greater than that okay in that case your interface has to store some of the information in the buffer okay so that frame size is known as jumbo So uh, IPv6, we are done. Then we have frame filtering by Palo Alto, like L2 features. We have L2 interface in Palo Alto. 
So these are the things that we use for uh, TCP as well as UDP for frame filtering. Okay. So in spite of going through each and everything, I have shared slides. Okay. You may go through all these uh, things. If you have any doubt or any queries, please let me know. Okay. Then we have application ID that is app ID feature. It is yesterday, as I told you that it is the feature which is uh, Palo Alto proprietary. Only Palo Alto uses Pal uh, application ID feature. Okay. So let's discuss about it. And it is one of the most important part of your Palo Alto training. Remember guys. Okay. So most of the rules that you open or that you allow on your Palo Alto. Okay. Those rules will always and always contain some applications. Okay. So it is very important for you to understand what is app ID feature. So I request all of you to pay attention. And if you have any query, please let me know. Okay. So uh, first point is app ID provides the ability to identify application and application functions. App ID is a core function of Palo Alto Networks devices. Okay. What does it mean? It means uh, app ID is, is uh, you know, it's a feature in Palo Alto which provides you name of the application that are used by your traffic. For example, uh, if I say I am browsing internet, okay, the type of application that I'm using to browse internet, according to Palo Alto, is named with web browsing. Right? So let me show you quickly side by side. Okay. Give me a minute, guys. Okay. So guys, uh, I just logged in into our topology. Okay. And uh, I just turned on these three devices on. Okay. So let's quickly go to switch and configure management interface and uh, fiber zero interface of this PC into same VLAN. Okay, guys. So So I have one VLAN that is MGMT. One by zero and five by zero. Okay, so we have PC and so we have PC and firewall connected. Okay. Okay, let's wait for some time till the time Pelardo comes up. It will take five ten minutes. Okay. For the meantime. Okay, for the meantime, uh Let's discuss further about App ID till the time Palo Alto turns on. Okay, so App ID, I think we are very much clear. It provides the ability to identify application and application functions. For example, let's let's start with you know a very basic example. You want to open Google Calendar. Okay, so we all know that we have feature of Google Calendar available. So in order to access Google Calendar, you must first get Google Base application. 
okay on that application your google works it's a kind of layer okay on that layer your google base works or your google, or google application works okay then on that base application your several other applications are dependent now if you want to open google calendar okay google base shall also be enabled right so in this order we have to allow traffic and in some cases like you know you don't know what all applications need to be allowed in order to make that application working okay